for employee experience and security operations. Now we probably remember how we're going to be handling the question and answer today. Go ahead and open your app, get to the Q&A so that we can all submit questions. And I would like to go ahead and welcome to the stage Jayesh and Sham. Thank you. Right. Maybe we'll give folks a few more minutes. We see people walking in, so we'll start in a couple of minutes. Yes. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome. I hope. Uh, Everyone's having a wonderful time at the conference. And welcome to this session on automating your employee experience and security operations. Uh, my name is Jay Shah. I actually lead uh, the customer success organization at Workado, uh, as well as I'm also responsible for our security, governance, risk, and compliance. So from that perspective, I work very closely with our BT and IT teams to make sure we have the right security profiles, the processes and policies, and then are also implementing that. So one of the things I think a lot of folks here may, you may be involved like, you know, into audits, compliance audits, like how many people here are also involved in like ensuring you provide evidence for SOC 2 type 2 reports or so there you see Good NIST, number. you know, 800, 171, and so on. So that's another aspect that we have to do. I guess we have to do that annually. So I'm also responsible for that. And so today we, we will be sharing a bit of that. But first, I'll pass it on to Sham. Hello, team. Uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Sham Bojwani. I'm the Director of Business Technology and Cybersecurity Ops. I have two roles. I'm focused on employee experience. So when you think about help desk, system engineering, collaboration systems, that's one part of my role. And also security, right? From a security operations, making sure our devices, our internal cloud assets are protected. Super excited to be here to share what we are doing with Jam, automation, and share our story. Right. So maybe a bit on um, background on what work, who Workado is. Uh, so Workado is a low-code, no-code integration and automation platform. And really what we have designed it to do is typically uh, integration tends to be the domain of someone who's got strong developer skills. But what we have focused on is making sure that... Sorry about that. <laughs> Security uh, alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's really designed for people who are, for example, application admins. So a lot of the folks here, I think you're Jamf admins. You may be doing Okta, ServiceNav, and so on. So it's really designed for anybody who understands the business processes and what they're doing from work uh, to be able to use the product, right? Uh, so when we talk about integration and automation, what do we mean by it? So one of the first areas is if you take any business process, it actually spans a number of different systems. So if you just take something simple, like let's say, you know, hiring a new employee, it may touch greenhouse, it may touch workday, as you provision them, do Okta, you may create tickets for them in ServiceNow or Jira and so on, right? So one thing is, is basically automating that flow that touches across those different systems. The other area is around data orchestration. So I think a lot of, I think most of the folks here and I think IT or business systems, so you know, ELT, ETL, you may be taking all the data, moving into a data warehouse, or data lake, so for example, into Snowflake. So a lot of what we can automate is the flow of that data, doing the analysis, and then alerting and notification or actions on that data. Uh, and the uh, third thing is if you take those processes, 
a lot of the processes span across the enterprise. So, you know, enterprise automation. So if you take order to cash, it touches a number of different functional groups in your company. It touches a number of different systems in your company, right? So we can automate those, procure to pay, uh, even for probably what you may be familiar is the whole, if you think about worker lifecycle management, right? We're talking about hiring and onboarding, the person's moving into different roles within the company. At some point, they may leave the company, right? So how do we cover that across? So that's kind of another area of what we call enterprise automation. And the last aspect is, I think, you know, a lot of the people today work in tools like Slack and Teams. So how many folks here are Slack users in your enterprise? Wow. wow. So many. <laughs> <laughs> How about MS Teams? Right? So what we found is our employees and our customers and all, they want to do work from Slack or Teams. And so what we also focus on is enabling any of these employees to touch data or update data and any of these applications or business systems, right? So very simple example, hey, I want to do time off. You don't have, let's say you're using Workday. You don't have to go into Workday, log in, put in your request, and your manager comes. It can all happen, for example, from Slack or Teams. You say, I want to do time off, here's the thing. It will check, update Workday, notify through Slack to your manager, your manager can review and approve it. And so you're working purely in Slack or Teams, but all the information is still being updated into the system, so it's checking everything for you, right? So, so those, that at a high level is kind of what Workado is. And, and, and like just one more thing to add, uh, when you think about automation, me being in IT, security, I want my team to build more automations, right? And the definition of automation is not writing scripts, large pieces of code, using low code, no code. So that's what Workato allows us to do. It's a drag and drop interface. Like for example, uh, I, wanna, I want my team to build an automation for laptop collection, right? They go to Workato, they connect to the jam connector, build the automation, within one, two hours they are done. So, so like that's the power of it. It's empowering this uh, citizen development culture, right? Where even semi-technical folks can come in, they have an idea, they can automate it, take it to the finish line. Thanks. So maybe, you know, going back into, back into what, you know, today's session we're going to cover is really, I think, Workado's journey, right? So we are now, uh, company is about 10 years old, we have about 900 employees, and you know, from, from the get-go, we were always global, so we would hire people in different parts of the world. Uh, you know, some people would come to offices, and other people would work remote, so it was like a remote-first culture from the get-go. And you know, when we're, that created challenges, like how do you make sure you can get Let's say, you know, we're your champ, I think, well, Max. We are full 100% Max shop. <laughs> so how do we make sure we get these systems to the people, make sure they're configured right, you know, from a security and compliance thing, we're always concerned about data loss prevention, right? Like what happens if, you know, the laptop's stolen or some, some other things, that, you know, if it's not encrypted and so on, right? And when we looked at these processes, because of the global nature and so on, we had, even for simple things like, you know, onboarding, it would touch different functional groups, right? And there were handoffs. So it was not very smooth, right? So the customer experience was not great. And then also for the teams that were actually supporting this, there was a lot of manual work and checking, let me go check in this system, pass off to this. And you know, as we all know, when you have a lot more manual processes, it leads to errors and so on, right? And you get escalations and frustrations. So what we are gonna be covering today is that journey and talk about some of the challenges and how we have gone about addressing it. Now, a lot of this is through automation. Us being Workado, 
we used our own platform uh, because that was the easiest thing for us to do. And we actually do what we call Workado and Workado. So we try to use our product the way our customers would. So we, we can then share you know, what we have learned as well as learn from them. Uh, we are also going to cover uh, a bit around you know, what we do in terms from a security operations perspective, again, how we are looking to automate that. And I think everybody here probably has already heard about AI and large language models and so on. So we'll cover some of the things around how we are looking to leverage some of those things uh, you know, in the BTN systems organization. Yeah. So Sham will go into that. And at the end, we'll just wrap up with sharing some of the results uh, we have experienced. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Jayesh, for that uh, uh, kickoff. Uh, as Jayesh mentioned, this is our story about how we do things within Workato. So from a tech stack perspective, we are like a modern tech company. Everyone gets a MacBook here, right? So 100% MacBook. Uh, we leverage Okta. So Okta is our single sign-on platform. Uh, so a profile gets created as and when someone joins the company. And from a security standpoint, we use Zscaler and Sentinel-1. So Zscaler is our uh, secure web gateway, meaning we have agents running on, on the laptop. So anytime, if any employee goes to google.com, any website, Zscaler is doing the inspection, right? So it gives us that protection. Uh, Sentinel-1, it helps us with malware detection, USB access. So, so it, like these two tools are important from a security standpoint. And like, uh, like other tools like Google Workspace, we use Slack. Uh, we are big on Atlassian. So we use Atlassian as our ticketing system. Uh, we also use ZeroFox. So ZeroFox is a dark web monitoring system. It looks at the dark web finds if there are any compromised credentials, right? So, it's, so it's, it's been a great tool. So yeah, like these are the things that we use from a tech standpoint. Uh, of course, it's a big list, but these are the primary systems. Next slide. So our jam story, right? Uh, I would say we are a remote first company. Uh, remote was not new to us. We've been remote since the founding days. Uh, as Jesh mentioned, we hire people in Asia, Singapore, Philippines, India, different parts of the world, right? Uh, and as a Mac shop. So uh, we wanted a system that would allow us to manage our fleet of devices. Like we wanted to provide seamless employee experience. Like when someone joins the company, they should get the best laptop. They should have the best onboarding experience. They should get the right access, right? SaaS application access, right? So Jam sort of has allowed us to reach that dream state of employee experience. Uh, Jam has also allowed us to enforce zero trust, uh, zero touch. We also do device trust, meaning like certain core applications like Salesforce or financial impacting applications, we sort of restrict the access through the laptop. So yeah, I mean, Jam was a natural fit for us as a modern tech company. Uh, next slide. And, and talking about state before Mac and state after Mac, right? Uh, we grew almost 2x, 3x uh, in the last five years. And before Mac, uh, before having Jam, we were tracking devices manually, right? On spreadsheets, uh, collection of laptops, distribution of laptops was super manual. Uh, and also, again, as a remote company, let's say we decide to hire somewhere in the Philippines, right? How do we ship the laptop to them? How do we make sure we have complete visibility on how that asset is performing? So that was our state before. State after, we all know Jamf is a great product. Uh, it allowed us to enforce central device management. So for example, Jesh being one of our executives, we can generate reports for him. What is the laptop? What is the posture? How many laptops are non-compliant? So we have this uh, central device management. And also the seamless employee experience, right? Like for example, you hire a engineer in the product and engineering department. We wanted to make sure that engineer gets the right desktop applications, GitHub, Visual Studio, uh, like all these core applications. Jamf allowed us to package those apps using self-service. 
And it keeps our developers happy, right? We all know developers, they are expensive, they need the best tech, they, they need the best experience, or else they get frustrated. So Jamf has allowed us to reach that dream state and zero touch, right? Uh, with us having 20 locations across the globe, IT doesn't touch laptops. So what I mean by that is, right from the time someone gets hired to the time they actually get a laptop, we use a third party provider, they manage our laptops, right? And we wanted this handoff between HR, IT, and the third party to be seamless. So where we are not touching the laptops, where IT is not collecting laptops back. So Jamf has allowed us to be completely zero touch. Next slide. All right, so this is my favorite topic because I have IT and cybersecurity under my purview. So, uh, for example, I, I can think of a funny example from two weeks back. We had one of a senior engineer who lost their laptop. They left it at the airport. I'm like, how can you leave a laptop at the airport? It's, it's the company property, right? And this, this, this has been a trend. I'm pretty sure a lot of IT admins here, you get a call saying that, oops, I lost my laptop. I don't know where it is. It's damaged. What do I do now, right? So we started getting a lot of those requests from different parts of the company. And it's a struggle, right? It's a struggle. We have to track it. We have to do a follow-up. We have to create a ticket from an audit perspective. There was a lot of back and forth between the requester, between IT. Also, we have to inform finance, right? Like, we need to procure laptops. So there was a lot of back and forth between these different teams. So we looked at this problem. We are like, we are spending a lot of time on this. How can we automate, right? So that's where this idea came of having bots. I think, Jayesh, you touched upon it. Slack is our central UI for the whole company. So everyone uses Slack for most of their day-to-day -day operations. So what we thought is, let's create a bot. We call this bot as asset bot. And anytime if a device is non-compliant, if we lose a laptop, if a device is non -in uh, not in uh, encrypted, let's send out Slack notifications to our IT and BT team. So that's what this talks about, right? Whenever there is an abnormality in terms of devices being lost, non-compliant, the team gets a Slack notification. If you see this uh, screenshot, it, it gives you a list of users, whose, uh, users and laptops that were unencrypted. It also gives the instruction to the support person what needs to be done, right? And the continuation of that is they can trigger another automation to reach out to the employee. Like, hey, we see your laptop is non-encrypted. Let's get on a Zoom call. And they get a link to the Zoom bridge, right? So we are sort of reducing this back and forth between IT, systems, a lot of context switching. And this has actually saved us a lot of time. Next yeah, year. and I think, we, I think we are all, at the end, we are a service organization, right? And so employees will always do things. And this has actually helped us streamline that experience, right? being able to help them, because a lot of times it's just cajoling them. Can you please do this? You're not in compliance, right? So right. this kind of helped, helped improve their experience. At the same time, we got better compliance. Awesome. Thanks, Jash. All right, so the next topic is around offboarding. Uh, this is my favorite as well as sad topic. Uh, as an IT admin, uh, like Fridays, I am excited. It's the weekend. I'm going to do this, do that. But what, what used to happen is on a Friday, 4 p.m., you get a message from HR. Hey, can you get on a Zoom call? We have to do an unplanned offboarding. I'm like, shoot, I was going to have my beer. What's this? My whole <laughs> evening is spoiled now. So we all been there, right? Like we've been asked to support HR managers for offboarding. This used to be us a couple of years back, right? There used to be a lot of handoff between manager, HR. They had to go through multiple systems. Then HR will ask for laptop status. Where is the laptop? When do we get the laptop back? So there was like a lot of back and forth between these teams, different systems. We looked at this problem. We are like, can we automate this? Right? So this is not just our problem. This is also HR's problem. Right? So we again took the bot approach. We created a bot for our HR team where they can raise this request. Right? Like if it's a plan or unplanned termination, they go to Slack, they click a button, and, and, and like you, you can actually see in the screenshot. They click a button, 
it automatically triggers a bunch of automations, right? Automations in terms of offboarding the employee, uh, turning off the badge access, taking uh, what do you call revoking SaaS application, and the most important thing, asset, right? Locking the laptop, making sure IT gets the lock code for that laptop, and for us, creating a request for our third party who manages our laptop, right? So this has been game changer for us because not only it helps us, but it also helps our HR team, and we can enjoy our Fridays. We can still grab our beer at 4 p.m., so we don't have to worry about it. And also, like when I think about executives, they can do it themselves, right? If, if something needs to be done, they have a bot, and the bot triggers the automation. Yeah, and I think part of the challenge here is because I think for a number of you might be, you have global companies, right? So it happens at odd hours. So it's not just one time zone or one geography, it's global. So it's also enabled yep. that for us. And I also, like I said, sit on the security side. So when we, the auditors come, they'll say, okay, show me the proof that all these terminations, they terminated right when you Bang. said that is, right? So this also helps us from those audit perspective. Awesome. So we spoke about offboarding. Uh, next thing is regarding onboarding, right? Uh, like I mentioned, we believe in zero touch. We don't want IT to touch any of the laptops. Uh, so as part of onboarding, uh, there used to be a lot of handoff again, right? Someone gets hired. We use Greenhouse as our application tracking system. Then HR has to put in a ticket for onboarding. Then manager has to provide uh, specification due date. So there was a lot of context switching between a lot of these teams. It was a waste of time, right? So we looked at this problem uh, to make sure our employees get the right laptop, the experience that I was talking about, right? Developers, they are precious. We want to make sure they get the best laptop. So we looked at this problem where our whole hire to retire lifecycle is fully automated. So what I mean by that is Let's say a person gets hired through Greenhouse, right? So Greenhouse is our application tracking system. As soon as the status changes, it creates a record in Namely. So we use Namely as our HRIS platform. I'm pretty sure Namely, Workday, those are popular systems. So it creates a record on Namely. Then HR can input more information, right? And from there, it updates Snowflake. So Snowflake is our employee data hub. It has complete information about an employee, access, location, department, right? After that, it triggers an automation to create an Okta profile. And from there, the asset magic starts, right? Employee is supposed to start one week from now. We, we inform our third party uh, uh, partner to make sure we have a laptop in inventory to give it to the new hire, right? So that's one. Second thing is we want to make sure the manager is happy with what laptop we are providing. Right, like, is it a developer MacBook? Is it a custom MacBook? So we sort of automated all these things where IT is not involved. We are just the gatekeepers. Uh, we just do the checks, right? If we are running low on inventory, or for example, there's a special MacBook that we need for developers. I'm pretty sure, based on last week's announcement, we are going to get requests for crazy laptops. <laughs> that, that's going to happen. But like, this has allowed us to do zero touch. And the hiring manager, they have complete visibility, right? When is this person starting? What is the laptop status? When does the employee get the new laptop? So it gives them that detailed perspective. So uh, uh, there's that. Next slide. Awesome. So continuation of that, offboarding, onboarding. But people want fancy laptops every three, four years, right? Everyone wants the best MacBook. MacBooks do become slow over a period of time. So we took the same bot idea and gave it to our employees, right? So an employee can go to Slack, they can request a new laptop, right? Not everyone gets a laptop. It needs to go through approval. There needs to be a business justification. So we sort of automated that process. Like, for example, employee puts in a request for, I need a new laptop. It goes to their manager for approval. Then an automation kicks up. It looks at our inventory. What do we have within our inventory? It also looks at how many new hires we have in the next one, two weeks, right? And based on that, either the request gets processed or it gets denied based on the business case, right? So the idea is this is not only good for the employee, but also for the IT team because IT now has complete visibility. Who's the requester? Did, did this request get approved? And we can take action accordingly. 
Awesome. So the next thing is uh, device ownership update. Uh, like I mentioned, Vocato is a low-code, no-code platform, right? Uh, so for example, we had our uh, conference three weeks back. And of course, when you have a conference, marketing needs 20, 30 laptops, right? They're like, oh, can you send me these 30 laptops? I need it for two weeks. So we always want to make sure whenever a laptop is given to anyone, we have a device owner, right? And we don't want our support team to go into Jam and manually do this update. So we took the same bot approach, right, where we have a bot called Asset Bot. It gives them visibility about, like, for example, if they have to update a record, they do it through the Slack bot. They just fill out a form, it does the update. But what if they need to update 30 laptops, right? That's a lot of work. Either they have to create a Jamf API, either they have to build a new sequence workflow. It's a lot of work, right? So now with like Workato, the awesome thing is we have a Jamf connector. It's a low code, no code automation. And our support team, they can do these updates using a recipe, right? So they can either populate a CSV, a CSV reads from a Workato recipe, and the magic happens on the back end, right? And also from a security standpoint, for example, our security team, they ask for audit records. Can you give me a list of devices? We are out of the business of giving any data. They have access to the bot. The security team can click a button. They get a report directly from Jam, right? Because security, they don't know about Jam. All they care about is devices. What is the audit compliance? Are we meeting it or are we failing it, right? So, uh, that, that's another example of Vocato connector and the Slack bot. All right, so on the same topic, we spoke about device compliance, onboarding, offboarding. Uh, again, going with this Slack, uh, Slack bot approach, we have a global team, right? Our support team supports you, North America, Asia, European time zone. And things happen, right? People lose laptop. A device maybe not uh, in, in a proper compliance state. We don't want the team to like look at one-offs and take action, right? So what we did is with the same bot approach, we created an automation which which basically pipes all the abnormalities, unencrypted device being lost. For example, let's say if a device is not checking in every I would say th uh, 15 or 20 hours, right? All those devices list goes into a Slack channel, and the team has a way to take action, right? Action being, let's say if they have to inform the employee to take an action. They can click a button, the notification goes to the employee, they can get on a Zoom call, and they can figure it out, right? So long story short, the, the message here is Slack with automation has been a game changer for us. It has reduced a lot of context switching, it has improved our overall employee experience, and it's helping our team grow. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to hand it over to Jesh to talk about. Thanks, so, Sham. Yeah. So I think we also talked about, you know, so hopefully this kind of shows some of the things we did around automating for employee experience. Also wanted to share a bit more on security operations. So everything we covered kind of also flows into the security side, but, you know, what we saw with some of our customers is they came back to us and say, hey, look, folks, uh, how many people, by the way, are, sorry, are familiar with SOAR or have the, heard the term SOAR? Okay, so a few of you, right? So this is, again, you know, I think you get the theme. It's all about automation, right? So security or, or orchestration and automated response is really if you, if you have a, you know, events coming in. I'm sure a lot of you folks probably use CM, right? Like Splunk or Datadog or whatever, right? And, and so a lot of what we saw from customers was, hey, we are getting these events. We want to basically get insights. And then if we know that, you know, the threat level or the risk level is high, we want to take automated action, right? So we heard this from customers. Then Sham comes and says, you know, because we've been always pushing like, hey, how, how do we make this better and what do we do? Because as we shared, we have all these tools, right? Zscaler and Jamf and, you know, but as the events are happening, Okta giving, how do we detect anomalies, right? And how do we notify people and take action around it? So the idea of, you know, a lot of these automations, and I think I was in a session yesterday where I think people were asking, okay, you did this. Can I get the scripts or can I get the idea? So 
So the idea for Workado is we have something we call community recipes. So these are samples you can use as a starting point for your automations. But these accelerators, what we call accelerators, are more like solutions. And think of it as templates. So you get 70, 80% of what you need there, and then you can customize or change it to your specific requirements, right? So we actually now have a SOAR accelerator, right, that we, we provide. And Sham's gonna talk about how we use that internally. For sure, thanks, Jesh. Uh, as I mentioned, I also have SecOps as part of my other role. So typical SecOps team, we used to get almost 10,000 to 15,000 alerts, right? When I think about Jam, Zscalar, Google Workspace, AWS, alert fatigue, right? That was a real problem. And we were writing custom scripts to handle these alerts. So it, so it, it was too much for us to handle. And, and, and you, like we leverage Ash's team to build a connector. So our philosophy of SOAR is we want to ingest all these logs. It could be directly from Jam, either it could be from Zscalar, or it could be from a SEM, right? So that's the ingestion layer. Once we get an alert, we want to enrich it, right? We want to add more data, more context to it. Is it actually? And is it actually a true or a false statement for us to action upon, right? Then, of course, AI, AI is useful for everyone. So we sort of use this combined alert with AI to get, get us more context, right? And after that, if it's actually an alert that needs to be actioned, we create a Jira ticket automatically, right? Like Jira ticket gets created and also start a war room on Slack so that the concerned folks can be on the call. But this could also happen on a Saturday, 3 a.m. No one's around to answer it. We sort of automated this where the SOAR platform can itself take an action. So I'll give a typical example. Let's say we get an alert that a user is trying to log in from Russia, right? Based on their Okta profile, they should be in North America. So we get that alert. The, the recipe automatically goes in, and it automatically gets the Okta log, right? If the Octolog says, this user should be in North America, so that's a big anomaly. So it's, it's something for us to action, right? What the automation will do is, it can automatically trigger a playbook. So playbook are basically sequence of steps that you want to take action. The playbook can either lock the laptop, it, it can remove the laptop from the network, or we can suspend the Okta account for three, four hours, right, to handle this anomaly. So, that's the idea behind SOAR, and we have also sort of integrated open AI. I'll, I'll, I'll let Jesh go. Uh, yeah. Of course. Sure. So, yeah, I think we're running, we may be running out of time, so we're going to try to uh, go through faster on the last few slides. But, you know, I think we talked about um, AI and what we're doing. So on our platform, we are actually using open AI to help you build these automations also, right? So you can chat rather than having to build it, or at least get you started. Same thing with connectors. But we also are looking, as we build these automations, how could you use these LLM systems you know, as part of your actual workflows and, and leveraging it? So we have kind of taken the SOAR uh, accelerator and added AI. So we actually internally went ahead and did a relationship with OpenAI, because I think everybody here I don't know how many of your companies are looking to leverage LLMs or have you gotten requests for those? Okay. Generally, we are seeing at least where we sit, a lot of the business guys, hey, I want to play with it, I want to try something. So we have kind of done that relationship and we, we have a process to enable people to use it, I guess, responsibly, make sure no corporate data or information leaks, yes. right? It's not going. So one of the things we talk about Zscaler, people are using chat GPT, so we had to block. not necessarily block them, but it pops up a warning and says, hey guys, you know, you're using chat GPT, this is corporate data, please do not use it, right? So we, 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 we have done some of those things as well, but it's, it's again using AI to further enrich and, and do things, right? So we, we are seeing that as well, I think you heard about AI at the keynote yesterday, how they are looking at doing some of the, you know, assisting people to use Jamf uh, better, right? So those kind of things. So we'll see more of it. Um, I'm gonna 
much. Yep, I'm, I'm going to breeze through this. So this is more around device tracking and CMDB. So CMDB is your configuration management database. So when I joined the company last year, my first action was to look at a ticketing system. And we got Jira for the whole company, right? Like Jira service management, Jira software. Because we wanted to hold ourselves accountable to SLAs, SLOs, service catalog. What does the BT team support from a service standpoint, right? So we onboarded Jira. It's been a great system for us. But now when I think about this, now you have Slack. You have Jira. You are, again, context switching between these two systems, right? So what we thought is, like, let's say if, if someone is putting in a request for a device replacement, right? I don't want to log into Jamf, or I should not be looking at Slack, Jira differently. So we thought of this idea of creating a CMDB within Jira. So Jira is something called Jira Insights. It's, it's a plugin that you can use. And we sort of created our whole employee data hub on Jira. So employee name, location, manager, which department they belong to, what laptop they have, right? And the beauty of this is when a ticket is raised by a particular employee, it automatically, so if you can see the screenshot, uh, this is something that I have raised with my account. On the right side, you can see name, email, manager, location, and right below it, it has my asset information, right? So anytime the team is investigating a device issue, they can look at linked issues. Did we get three tickets last month for this employee for this device? Then it, then it classifies for a replacement. So the idea is to give the information at the ticket level. And we are using Workato as the orchestration engine to pull information from Jam, to pull information from Snowflake, from Namely. So this has helped our team improve our MTTR, our mean time to resolution by 20%. Next slide. Awesome. So I just wanted to give a quick walkthrough of what a Workato recipe is, how the automation looks, right? It may be a bit small, but I'll, I'll try to breeze through it. So the problem statement is device update, right? We wanted support team to update a device to a new email address because the device is being given to this uh, other employee, right? So it's a five-step workflow. First step is on the recipe, you create connections to Slack. You create connections to Jam, right? You need a service account to create those connections. Step one, you want to capture input from Slack. Right, so if you can see the uh, what do you call uh, version of it, it's looking for name, email address, serial number. So these are the things the automation is expecting. Second thing, it's a if else statement, right? Like the the beauty of low code, no code is it's if else, it's app to app integration combined together, right? You can have a if else of 50 statements, you can have a if else of 100 statements, right? So it checks. Can I go to Jam? It goes to Jam, sees, can I find this laptop based on serial number? Yes. If not, can I find this uh, device using email address? If it finds the device, it does an update, sends a Slack notification saying that I'm done with the update. If it's not able to do it, it says I can't do the update, right? So this is just a boiler recipe. You can do a lot. Like, Jesh, you touched upon OpenAI. You can have a recipe which says, oh, go to OpenAI, get me more context about similar laptops, and take an action, right? So it's low code, no code. We have a lot of recipes that you can try out. But yeah, just wanted to give a sample of how it works. Yeah, I, I think the main thing, hopefully, is to illustrate that you know, it's, it's the way the platform's designed is that you can actually use it you know, pretty simply. To your advantage. Uh, OK, we we'll keep. Awesome. So just to summarize, uh, we wanted to share our story, right? So using Jamf workout automation, we've been able to achieve a seamless employee experience. And we have reduced a lot of context switching, right? Using low code, no code, Slack, and making it easy for our employees, for our support, for our BT team. And zero touch, right? Like we've been able to achieve zero touch from hire to retire lifecycle using Jamf and Vocato. And from a security standpoint, we've been able to enforce best-in-class security. And the most important thing is we've been able to cut down our incident response time by around 25%, and our overall time to resolve tickets by uh, almost 20%. So again, bots, automation, system administration is going through a digital transformation, right? And low-code, no-code is a catalyst for that. And, and the other piece is when we go through the audits, now it's a lot easier to get exactly. that. So actually, it makes the 
audit team's job pretty simple. Yep. Uh, and with that, we want to thank you for coming to this session. And then if, you know, we, we have a QR code there. So if you're interested in trying out Workado or play with it, we have a trial, trial accounts available. So uh, you can use the QR code to request that. And with that, we'll take questions. Excellent. Thank you so much. So we've got a few that have come in. The first is we've got Slack and Teams automation. Is there any Google in integration? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so I, I guess it's maybe a bit more insight on Google. So with Google Workspace, all the Google products, right? Yes, there are connectors for all of them. But I don't know whoever asked the question. Do If you can give a bit more Specific, maybe we can answer it better. It may have been in room. It may have been one of our virtual attendees. Oh, okay. So, all right. Go by ahead. all means, they will give how to connect up with them. We can figure out how to make the Googles work. So, uh, how are you monitoring for chat GPT usage and warning others about, hey, this is corporate con information? Uh, we are using Zscalar. So Zscalar is our secure, secure web gateway. So anytime traffic goes to chat GPT, it gives us that functionality. And... We are also sending Slack notifications using Workato that what is your use case? How can we help you, right? Rather than being a blocker, we are trying to be an enabler. Yeah, and to add to that, I think I shared, we have now a relationship with OpenAI, so we have a corporate license and account, and then we have a process for people to still you use know, it. request the use case, and then we enable them. But, you know, I don't know, our, our view on that is it's coming, so we as business systems might as well <laughs> plan for it and again, manage that effectively. Because otherwise you're gonna get shadow IT or people doing stuff. They mean uh, well. So uh, what is the tool that you used in Jira to build out your CMDB and how much customization did you have to do? So we use Jira Insights. It's a free product with Jira service management. We use Workato as the orchestration layer and it's basically creating a simple table, name, email, phone number, location department. So it's creating like a simple table. Another question that we've got, any workflows to assign any of those non-compliance system devices to another specific member of your team, almost like sort of high level ticket management? Absolutely. I mean, we have 1300 connectors with Vocato, so you can assign to any person on rotation, on on-call schedule, on round-robin manner. Excellent. And the last one that I've got here, does a third party enroll your laptops with a service account before deploying them to the new employees to make sure that they're enrolled correctly? And if so, how does that new employee log in and decrypt if a service account is used? So we don't use service accounts to log into laptops. Uh, so whenever a person gets a laptop, they get instructions on how to log in. Uh, we use Jamf Connect, right? So their Octa credentials are used to log in into the laptop. So there is like no service account credential. For, for marketing, there could be, right? Then we create local accounts. Again, it's done through automation. They get all the instructions through Slack. Excellent. I've got someone wow, sneaking on in. <laughs> okay, we've got one. Is, is Zeke, Merry Christmas. Is it Zscaler plugins that you install on the computer? It's an agent on the computer, yep. Excellent, and this person's org uses Okta to integrate with Jamf Connect, and they experience some failed enrollments with a new hire that doesn't follow the remote management prompts, or they leave the laptop idle too long without logging into Okta or the Jamf Connect screen. Do you have any advice as how to navigate that challenge? Uh... It's a tricky one because it's a common problem that people experience. But what we do is we s sort of do a retry two or three times when something like this happens to just push it because it could be a network issue, it could be a connector issue, or it could be a throttling issue. So we do a retry and, 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 and that's how the connector helps us, our own connector. Excellent. So we've gone through pretty much all the questions here, but I'm certain people are gonna want to talk to you about this more. You've got that QR code. Yep. Is there any other good way for them to contact you or is that QR code the best way? You can way? do, if you you know, you can connect us on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Or, yep. And we we'll be LinkedIn. here, so if you have questions, happy yeah, to yeah. answer and connect. Excellent, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, thank you.